Hi everyone, Vega here. In today's video we're going to be looking at Procyon and Sirius, the giant stars of our neighbourhood. So let's get to it. So first of all, where are Procyon and Sirius? Um, okay, so first of all we need to find the constellation of Orion. So here with Betelgeuse there, red supergiant, Rigel in the bottom right corner. The belt actually points, as you can see, to Sirius, which is obviously also a very bright star in our sky. And then we form a right angle to go up to Procyon, also known as Alpha Canis Minoris. Um, and that's that's how we find the two. So not too difficult to, to find in the sky. Um, what kind of stars are, are we looking at? Um, that obviously there's our sun, G-type star. As we see, we move up the main sequence to find Sirius here in, in the A class, um, substantially warmer than the Sun. Um, but where's Procyon? You might wonder. Uh, well, it's, it's going backwards a little bit. Um, actually, in the, in the F class of star, just about a, a warm, sort of white, almost yellow, what yellowy white colour. Uh, F class star Procyon A. Um, so, uh, what about the relative sizes? So, here, here is, here's the sun here, that's, that's the one we know. Um, and then we go up 1.711 solar radii to Sirius A. Um, obviously, there is a Sirius B, which is a, a white dwarf, we'll comes out in a minute. Um, and then, even again, a bit, bit further up to Procyon A at 2.048 solar radii. Um, also, the Procyon system, interestingly, has a dwarf companion, Procyon B here. Um, so, uh, looking at that, you might think, well, Pro Procyon's the, the more important of, of the two, Sirius being slightly smaller, um, but that's not the case. Um, Sirius is slightly smaller in terms of the radius, but for that, it's, it's 2.3, 2.06 masses of the Sun, but Procyon's only one point. 1.5 masses of the sun, so Sirius is substantially heavier, and um, they're not alone either. They're obviously, in the Procyon system, there's a the white dwarf companion, which is 0.6 solar masses, and and Sirius also has, you probably know, has a companion series known as the Dog Star, and the companion, the little white dwarf known as the Pup, but actually um, itself a substantially large solar sort of. Uh, mass star at one around one one solar masses um, um how, how bright are they uh sirius as we know is the brightest star in our sky um only things that get brighter than sirius and mars and jupiter um venus and the moon and obviously the sun um so eight eight point six light years sirius alpha canis majoris uh, the brightest star in our sky. And Procyon, we have to go down the list through Canopus, uh, Alpha Centauri, and Opturus, and Vega, Capella, and Rigel. And finally, we get to Procyon, the eighth brightest in our sky, uh, a visual magnitude of 0 0.34, so still a very, very bright star, um, also known as Alpha Canis Minoris, um, uh, and a distance of 11 light years, so slightly further from Sirius. Uh, from the Sun to Sirius, but, but still relatively close. Um, now, in terms of luminosity, this is where the, the big difference between the Canis Majoris and the Alpha Canis Majoris and the Alpha Canis Minoris is, is that Procyon is seven times the brightness of the Sun, 6.93 there. Whereas Sirius, look, there we are, look, 25.4 times the Sun luminosity. So that, that extra bit of mass and the, the slightly smaller radius makes for a much hotter and much brighter star. Um, not, not that Procyon isn't bright in itself, but often um, it gets overlooked because Sirius is, is the far more powerful star. So let's let's focus a little bit more on Procyon and also its, it's white dwarf partner, Procyon B, you can see there in, in the graphic. Um, only a tiny, tiny, spec in terms of radius um, but the, the orbit the two have so you, you can imagine Procyon B the white dwarf star in the middle 
Um, there is a, bind, a barrier centre that they, between the two, so they're not actually orbiting one round the other. They're, they are orbiting a common barrier centre um, of about 40 year orbit. Um, it's quite eccentric, more eccentric than Mercury's orbit, um, the, with the shortest different dis distance being 8.9 astronomical units and the largest being 21. So you might imagine them as being roughly, on average, the distance between the Sun and Uranus, um, but obviously varying quite a lot there. Uh, so what, what might it be like on on a, a planet around Procyon? Um, at present, we don't know of any planets uh, in the Procyon system or, or the Sirius system um, as for now. But imagine Earth was orbiting Procyon A star uh, we were in Paris, you see here the Eiffel Tower, uh, the La Défense uh, region there, beautiful city of course, um, but under Procyon, obviously seven times the brightness, one and a half times the solar radii, um, Paris probably no more, um, uh, much of the earth vaporised, certainly oceans, um, not, not very habitable. Um, we'd have to get the Earth and push it out to between 2 and 3.7 astronomical units if we were under Procyon system, so even further out than Mars, Mars itself wouldn't be habitable. Um, perhaps Ceres might, might come under the more habitable bodies of, of the Procyon system, if, it, if, it, if the bodies were the same. Um, again, interesting, if we were, were under the Procyon system, um, on, on a body like Ceres out in the 2 to 3.5 astronomical unit zone, we'd still have to deal as well with 2.5 to 7.1 times the amount of UV light damage. Um, so another issue with living under a yellow-white subgiant um, that we'd have to deal with. So again, not, not as habitable as, this, as our own sun. Um, now, um, I talk about Sirius and talked about Procyon, but also Procyon does have a relatively close neighbour, not as close to Procyon as Alpha Centauri, AB star to Proxima, but not still fairly close nonetheless. Um, the distance between the two being 1.12 light years, um, it's about about five to six times the distance between Alpha Centauri AB and, and uh, Proxima. Um, not gravitationally bound as, as far as we know um, but if we were to turn the camera around and look back from the Procyon AB system towards the Sun this is something what it looked like uh, in the constellation of Acula there, the Sun a, mag a 2.7 magnitude star um, in the sky uh, so not, not, not particularly important in the Procyon uh, system sky, uh, but a visible sky star with, with the naked eye nonetheless. Um, the Leuton star system, um, interesting, you, you might think, well, if there's a red dwarf that's 1.12 light years away, when we think of Proxima, it's it's, it's almost un invisible, even with telescopes quite hard to find in our skies, and that's at four light years, but what's the difference if it's a bit closer? Um, and not only that, Leuton star is actually quite a lot larger than it's quite a large red dwarf at 0 0.035 solar masses. Um, so from Procyon AB, the Leuton star would be uh, um, uh, 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 again a mag around a magnitude two and a half, magnitude 2.7 star from the um, Procyon AB system. So the Sun and Leuton star um, roughly the same brightness from Procyon A and B, of course the, the Sun of course being 10 times the distance, uh, quite an interesting way of looking at it there. Um, if, if we were on Procyon AB of course and we wanted to send a starship out into the, to the vastness of space, perhaps our first destination might well be Leuton Star, it has, um, it has a, a planetary system that we know of. Um, so that might be our our destination from Procyon. Uh, finally, as well, um, you might find interesting Procyon 
uh, being a yellow white star is is actually approaching the end of its um part of them wants is stay on the mainstream and and perhaps in the next 10 to even 100 million years it's going to expand um, into a, a red giant um star so uh if we could stay around for maybe 10 to 100 million years um we might uh see a, a larger more important star in the sky of course um problem is that by then Procyon will be a long way away from us due to galaxial rot rotation but well, nice to think of anyway um, thanks for watching um, don't forget to add a like or share this video um, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed it uh, and I'll see you on the next one